Hello everyone, and welcome to episode one of my Create Tutorial series. In this video, I'm going to be covering the world gen stuff that Create adds, as well as be going over the basics of Create's rotational power system. As well as at the end of the video, I'll be going over the config files that Create has, if you're interested in that. So yeah, let's just get into it. So Create is one of the most I don't know what to say, useful Minecraft mods I think I have ever seen. It can do everything. It can do auto farming. It can do auto mining. It can do auto crafting, as well as you can put the things together to create whatever wacky production line stuff you want to set up. As well as setting up the production lines or whatever, it really reminds me of Factorio, and I like that. I like that. That's good. Factorio, great game by the way, check it out. So let's just carry on to some world gen stuff. So create adds two types of ore. It adds copper ore and zinc ore. The copper ore is not always green. It starts off as this, well, copper color, but when exposed to air over time, it will turn green. Pretty simple. And the ores can be smelted into ingots, pretty simply. One ore, one ingot, that goes for both of them. Uh, just normal vanilla furnace, nothing fancy going on there. So let's just head up the elevator and look at some more world gen stuff. So first, um, the, the ingots, they can be turned into blocks like most ingots can in Minecraft. So just three by three, nine copper ingots, one copper block, three by three zinc ingots, nine zinc ingots, one zinc block. Uh, they look pretty good. You could probably use these for some decoration or whatever. The copper block turns green over time, just like the ore. As well as create adds a few types of stone. Not a few, six, no, seven different types of stone. So it adds limestone, weathered limestone, dolomite, gabbro, I think that's how you say that, natural scoria, scoria, and dark scoria. Now... It also adds, a, I don't know what to say, variants of already in the game stone, so andesite, dorite, and granite, and it adds all sorts of things. It adds cobblestone and andesite cobblestone, all sorts of different types of bricks, walls, stairs, slabs, and mossy versions. Uh, it does this for all the types of stone, except um, vanilla stone, except not vanilla stone, except like cobblestone stone, you know what I mean as well as it does that with the types of stone create adds itself. So it has all sorts of different decoration blocks you can use in your worlds. And I think they all look pretty nice. So before we carry on to what people really want, the rotational stuff, uh, I'm just going to cut away to a literal cut in the world. You'll see what I mean. When I said cut in the world, I literally meant a cut in the world. So I'm just going to use this to kind of show like a visual representation of how rare the ores and different types of stone might be in your world. So as we're looking here, you can see there's some zinc ore, there's some copper ore, and they're not that rare. I would say they're about as rare as iron, but not as rare, maybe a bit more rare than iron, but not super rare. It should be pretty easy to get your hands on the stuff as well as the types of stone that create adds spawn in these massive like i don't know spheres of the stuff so it should also be quite easy to get your hands on those for decoration and stuff so as we're just going here you can take a look around seeing where the ores and stuff spawn so just a nice little re representation of how easy or hard it would be to find ores and where you might want to look to find them. So yeah, that's that. Pretty just, I don't know, I think it's useful to do this to see the stuff. But yeah, back to the actual tutorial world. Okay, so now that we got the world gen stuff over with, let's get on to the part people actually want to see. The spinny things. So before we can get into the rotational power, we have one more thing we need to craft. And that is andesite alloy. Pretty simple to craft. Just two andesite, two zinc nuggets, one andesite alloy. You can also replace the andesite, I mean not the andesite, the zinc ingots with the iron nugget, not ingots, zinc nuggets with iron nuggets, and it's the same thing. 
Um, there is a more efficient way to craft this, uh, but it does require a machine. Uh, we'll get into that next episode. So the most basic rotational power thing, the shaft. So just two andesite alloy, that gives you eight shafts. Now, I don't really know what to say about the shafts. It's a shaft. You connect it to something that spins, the shaft spins, and it can spin something else at the other end. It horizontally or vertically it transfers the power in a straight line as far as you want. It has no, I don't believe, I haven't run into any restrictions on how long you can make them. Um, yeah, so if we just press F3 here, we can get a nice visual representation of how the power is being transferred from the generator to the shafts. Nice. So pretty simple, easy to get a hold of and understand. So the next thing, cog wheels. So again, crafted pretty simply, one andesite alloy, eight wooden buttons, and that gives you eight cog wheels. Um, and these things, they're, I'm gonna refer to the cog wheels as gears, just, just some information there. So you place these things beside each other and they transfer the power between themselves. Now one thing I should also mention is when you're placing create things, it gives, when you're trying to build stuff with create blocks or more specifically the moving, the actual like rotational power stuff, uh, it gives you these nice arrows or whatever. So instead of having to place it beside it, you can just see where the arrows appear, just put there, you can click and it will just place in the direction of that arrow. I think this is a very nice feature. Same thing with the shafts. It allows you to just, you don't even have to place the blocks there. You can just place shaft in a straight line from one single block. So it's pretty useful. Switch to the tab there. So small cog wheels or small gears, pretty easy to understand. Just give the visual representation of how the power is transferred between them. So it's coming from the motor to this gear, to this gear, to this gear, and then this gear splits it off into these two gears. Pretty simple to understand. So let's move on to the next thing, the large cog wheel. So pretty simply crafted, just four oak buttons, four oak planks, or of course you can replace the oak with whatever type of wood you want. And that gives you two large cog wheels. Now, these things are a bit different than the small ones, other than the fact that they're big. They can't be placed beside each other. As you can see, they clearly, the teeth clearly do not mesh, mesh with each other. And as well with this, you can place them like this. So the arrows don't place them beside each other, instead places them like one up and like flipped to the side. So that allows you to do stuff like this and transfer the direction of power from horizontal to vertical or whatever you want. So another thing these gears can do is if you pair the small and the large gears together, you can change the speed of your spin or rotational power. So a large gear spinning a small gear will double the speed. So if this is spinning at 16 RPM, this will spin at 32. If this is spinning at 32, this will spin at 64. And it works the other way around too. If you have a small gear spinning a big gear, it will half the power, or not power, speed. It will double the power, but half the speed. Uh, basically, that's, put it simply. So if this is spinning at eight RPM, this one will spin at four RPM. And this, if this is spinning at four RPM, this will spin at, wait, no, yes. I meant to say 16 at the start, but you know what, you, you get it. It halves the speed. So the gears, pretty simple. Uh, if you really wanna figure out how they work, uh, I suggest just making a super flat world or whatever and start playing around with stuff until you figure out what works. So there is also another way of transferring power and that is with belts. Now the mechanical belt, pretty easy to craft. It's just six dried kelp and that gives you one mechanical belt. Now these belts, let's just grab a belt here. They're, you, they can't be placed on their own. Instead, they must be stretched between two shafts, uh, and they do have a limit. You can only, if we place a shaft here and click on it, you can see it makes this little red particle effect that shows the direction it's going in, and I should probably move that because um, something's in the way there. There we go. 
So you can see it's making this particle effect and it shows how far we can go. So as you see the limit is about here. So this is his max range. So you can see nothing here, something here. If we place a shaft here, turns green, we have a belt. Nice. So there is a downside to the belts though. The belts are an inefficient way of transferring power. So if we look at this one here, you can see this is using eight uh, stress units of power. So the belts use up power. So if you don't have to use a belt, I suggest not using them because they do waste some power. And the stress units they use, so it's times one their RPM. So in this one has eight RPM, it will use eight stress units. This one is at 64 RPM, it will use 64 stress units. But another thing, or more importantly, instead of power transfer, these belts can be used as conveyor belts. So you can throw items on them and they will just slide nicely along. If you would like to pick items up, just right click on the item and you can pick it up. Now the nice thing about these belts is that it's a, not an actual real item on the belt. So you can't pick it up, it can't despawn, stuff like that. So it, might, it also might help save on performance, might reduce lag. So pretty nice. As well as, of course, you can make belts on angles, vertically. The vertical ones, um, they don't transfer items. They're just purely used for power. And the horizontal ones, is that horizontal? No, that's on an angle. Uh, of course, throw an item on it, throws it off the end. So very useful for item transfer. So that's basically in terms of like power transfer, that's basically it. But there is other stuff we can... Um, talk about. So before I talk about the gearboxes and stuff, there's another thing we can craft, and that is the andesite casing. You're going to need probably a few of these, quite a few actually, uh, but luckily they are pretty simple to craft. It's just two andesite alloy, six oak planks or planks of any type, and a log of any type, and that gives you four andesite casing. And these things, they look quite nice for decoration. When you place them beside each other, their textures connect, which is nice. I loved connecting check textures. Uh, there's also something else you can do with them. Is let's say you want to have the shaft go through a wall, but you don't like how there's a hole. Well, simply click on the shaft with the casing and it becomes an encased shaft. So a nice way to seal off holes and walls that have shafts in them. And there's also something else you can do with them, is you can put them on belts. So if you don't like the way belts look, just floating in the air, you can put the casing on belts and, yeah, make some nice conveyor belts or whatever. It does not... Oh, wait, it does? It didn't used to... Apparently, it also works on vertical belts now. I don't remember it working on vertical belts now. Well, I learned something now. So you can also use the casing on vertical belts, as well as the... Um, slanted belts. So those are the casings. Very useful and they look nice and are perfectly safe to use as a de decoration block. So on to more power transfer stuff. This is the gearbox. So it's crafted simply just one casing, one andesite casing, four cog wheels, that gives you one gearbox. Now it, as you can see it has four input slash outputs on it for rotational power. And what it does is basically you put power into you put power into one side and it splits it into three outputs now as you can see each of the outputs is spinning in different directions so it also reverses the direction of the spin so this is spinning uh, the clockwise this one is spinning counterclockwise and yeah it's just and this mod it is very it, not very similar but it is similar to rotary craft in terms of how it uses rotational power but in rotary craft the rotation like the direction of rotation doesn't matter in this mod the direction of rota rotation is actually something you need to pay attention to so yeah so gearbox pretty simple uh will reverse the rotation as well as splits splits off the rotation into three separate things and if you want a, um, i'll just talk about it in a second here if you can just put a gearbox in a crafting table and that gives you a vertical gearbox and it's just like a gearbox but vertical and it does exactly what you'd think it does it does the same thing but well vertically and if you want to turn the vertical gearbox back into a horizontal horizontal one pretty simple 
just plop it into a crafting table and that turns it back into a normal gearbox. Let's keep going. So this is some more complicated stuff, so but still very useful and pretty simple to understand. This is the clutch. It's crafted with two redstone dust, two shafts, and one andesite casing. Um, it looks similar to an encased shaft. It basically, so you can see the power is going through this thing here. Well, if we give it some redstone, it stops. So pretty simple. It Well, it's a way to turn off rotational power. Pretty simple. On to the next thing. So this is the gear shift. Pretty, it's pretty simple to craft as well. They're all all of the stuff. It's pretty simple to craft. It's all just andesite and wood, basically. Uh, so two redstone dust, two cog wheels, and one andesite casing. That gives one gear shift. And basically, so you can see the power is going through it. But if we give it some redstone, it changes the direction of rotation. This will be really useful when you're trying to build um, contraptions. Uh, you may have seen some before. The elevator and the doors down at the start there, those are contraptions. The contraptions are basically collections of, of blocks that will move. And this is uh, the, the gear shift is a good way to change the direction of their movement. On to the next thing. The encased change I drive. So maybe you wanted to transfer power in a like horizontally with a belt or something, but you don't want to waste power in powering the belt. Well, with the, with the encased chain drives, they can do the same thing the belt does, but they also have a bunch of extra outputs on them and they don't use up extra power. And despite it might seem like they, they're not supposed to do this, I am i don't know whether this is intended or not, but the chain drives, they can basically, you can place them and they will in fact, work in both directions. And I forgot to show the crafting recipe. That's that's nice. So again, pretty simple to craft. Just two iron nuggets, one andesite casing, two shafts. That gives two of them. So two encased chain drives. Um, they don't use up any power. They transfer in a straight line and they give a lot of outputs. And they can even change the direction like that. Well, not change the direction of rotation, but they can change the direction the shaft is facing. Okay. On to the next thing. So that's basically all the power transfer, transfer stuff. There is a bit more, but I'll get into that in a later episode because that's the more complicated stuff. So as well as there's some other things you want to do. So this is the speedometer. So I, yeah, I believe it's, you say speedometer. I believe that's how you say it. I don't know how other people say it, but that's how I'm going to say it. So it's crafted with a compass, two shafts, and one andesite casing. And it basically, it measures the speed that the stuff is rotating through it. So it measures the speed of the connected shaft. But it says, like when I look at it, it says the rotational speed, but that's just because I have these engineer's goggles on. And if you're wondering why I have the Alex skin, it's because I am stuck as the Alex skin. I can't change my Minecraft skin. I am permanently stuck as Alex. It's a long story, but it happened. But yeah, so without the glasses on, these, I'll show how to craft these probably next episode. But without the goggles on, you can't see. It doesn't give, like, the actual number, so you basically just have to look at where the needle is pointing. And now, so 1 to 29 RPM is slow, so that's in the green area. 30 to 99 RPM is moderate, and that's the blue area. And 100 to 256 RPM is in the pink area. And let's just put these goggles back on. If I come over here, you can see. So they make they make particle effects around colored particle effects to help, just kind of help visualize what the speed is. So you can see this is 16 slow. This one is 64. It's moderate, and this one is fast and at the max speed. And you can see the needle is moving all the way up at the edge there. So yeah, so very useful spinometers. Very useful. Definitely put them on your creations so you know how to how fast they're spinning. And now you may might know how fast they're spinning, but how much stress is your whole system under? That's what the stressometer is for. It's pretty simple. You literally just put the speedometer in a crafting table and that turns it into a stressometer. Now the stressometer does basically the same thing as the speedometer, except it tells how much stress the whole your whole 
I don't know, shaft slash gear network is under. So I'll demonstrate it working um, in just a minute here. So that's most of that, most of, if not all of the rotation stuff. Now you're wondering, okay, I have all these gears and shafts and gearboxes and stuff. How do I make them spin? Like can't use the creative motors. Those are creative only. Well, you can use a hand crank crafted with just three planks, one out and a site alloy and one shaft that gives you one hand crank. And by right clicking it, you spin it by shift right clicking it, you can spin it in the other direction. Now, this thing spins at uh, what was that I believe that was 32. Yes. So the it makes 32 RPM. And it has 256 stress capacity. Um, so it is a pretty powerful source of power. But I do believe using it uses up your hunger bar. So yeah. So again, right clicking spins it shift right clicking it, you can change its direction. Nice. Now, maybe you don't want to stand there and just turn your crank on your machines. Don't worry, there's a solution to that. The water wheel. It's crafted with just one large cog wheel, surrounded with eight oak slabs, or wood slabs of any sort, and that gives a one water wheel. Now, these things, basically, pretty simply, water flows over the paddles on the side, it spins. Now, you want the water to be going this way, not that way so you want it against so the direction the paddles are pointing you want it coming at like the direction they're pointing if that makes any sense I don't know how to explain it I'm not the best with explaining things usually but you can see here what I mean and so this thing it produces well it's not at its max speed right now if you want to get the most out of your water wheels you're going to want wa water flowing on all sides top sides and bottom so something like this is the most efficient way to use your water wheels so having water come over the top down the side and under the bottom that will unlock the full potential of your water wheels and a full put a water wheel at its full potential will have 256 stress units at 16 rpm so yeah and of course they can be stacked if you just look over here they can be stacked on one another um, to make one big, long, slightly cursed water wheel. So yeah, so that's the water wheel. It's pretty simple to use, um, a fairly powerful generator for what it costs. So yeah, so just to talk about stress units for a second, this, you can see I have a bunch of the water wheels over here, eight of them, in fact, all running at their full potential. And so I have a couple of these crushing wheels here. These use up a lot of stress. So if I turn this on here, you can see it starts spinning. And you can see that's a rotational speed. But if we come over here to the stressometer, you can see we're using 6% of our stress. So we're using, I don't know how much that's using. It's using 128 stress units. So if we set this to one RPM, we can see this thing uses eight stress units at one RPM. So if we double the speed to two, it will use 16. So basically, the speed that your machine or whatever is spinning is directly related to the stress units it uses. If we pick this up here and hold shift on it, we can see the stress impact. So it uses eight times the RPM. So whatever the RPM is, it will use eight times that. So let's turn this back up to 16. And with, let's just turn this one off. If we turn this one on, I have used gears to create full, the fast, if you try and make anything go faster than this, like if I try and add another gear on to a, um, this max speed shaft, so the max speed is 256 RPM. If I try and add another gear onto that, uh, make it spin faster, it'll just break the gear. So at max speed, you can see this thing is using, uh, that's 2048 stress units. And that's just enough. So all of these uh, water wheels, they can just provide just enough um, power to power that one wheel. But what happens if we turn on this other one? You can see the entire thing stalls. So you can see overstressed, it appears this contraption is overstressed, uh, add more sources or slow it down. Um, yeah, and you can see this gauge, um, we're overstressed by 106%. So yeah. 
So that's basically how overstressing works. So if you if your generators cannot produce enough power to spin whatever machines you have, it will stop the entire gear system, unlike rotary craft. In rotary craft, if something um, wasn't being supplied enough force, it just didn't work, but it didn't stall the entire gear system or whatever. And that's why I kind of like create the whole create rotational thing. I think it's actually better than rotary craft because it's a bit more realistic in how it works and the fact that you can stall your generators or whatever. So yeah, um, that's that. So that's the end of this tutorial. Um, in the next tutorial, I'm going to be talking about the actual machines and stuff and what kind of stuff you can do with this, with this rotational power. So yeah. So now on to the boring pit part where I talk about the, um, config, the config files. So in the Minecraft config folder, create has two files. So it has this one. Let's just move this over here. And that's a bit big. Let's just move it, make this a bit smaller. There we go. So it has this, this is just create client. Uh, this is the create client config file. It just has some stuff here. So just some simple stuff. So show item descriptions on shift, true, display tool tip when looking at overstressed components, true, log a stack trace when rendering issue happen happens with moving contraption. Uh, this is all stuff. You probably don't need to mess with this stuff at all, but it's here and you can take a look at it. So log a stack trace, I believe, I don't know fully what that means. Some of my friends that know Java better than me, they probably know what the heck that stuff is, but I believe it has something to do with when something renders wrong, it tries to figure out what went wrong or something like that. Um, then there's fan particle density. So the fan, the fan um, machine block, it makes particles. Uh, you can just change how dense those particles are. And then show colorful world, uh, blah. show colorful debug information when the F3 menu is open. So if you remember when I was looking at the gear, the gears and shafts and stuff, I pressed F3 and every, all the shafts and whatever got that nice colorful overlay that changes that. Then offset the overlay from the goggles. So these two things basically you can change where the, when you look at something with the goggles, these two basically change where that window appears. So let's move on to the next one. Get off that screen. There we go. Okay, then create has another one, which is just create common. So this is basically all the world gen stuff. So you can have just, so prevents all world gen added by create. So if you set this to true, it will not generate anything from create. And then forward caught tile entity something. I have no idea what this does, uh, something. Uh, if someone knows Java better than me, they can, might be able to explain that in the comments, but it does something, probably don't want to mess with it. Now here's all the different configs for ores and stuff. So this one's for cop ore, so you can change whether you want it to actually spawn in the world and you can give a range, cluster size and stuff like that. So minimum height, max height, cluster size, cluster count, that stuff. And that goes for copper in the ocean. Apparently copper in the ocean has a different thing. Um, there's also zinc ore, zinc in the desert. Then there's limestone and all the different types of stone and stuff. Uh, so you can change how that stuff spawns. Now create also has, if you remember from this one, it says client only settings. If you're looking for general settings, look inside of your world's server config folder. So if you go to your world, wherever your world is saved, and you open it, you'll see in the world file, there will be a file known as server config, open that, and then it'll have two more things in there. So it'll have, well, not two more things. It has one more thing. This is create server. So this gives a bunch of other stuff. So all sorts of other parameters and stuff like that. So all sorts of stuff that have to do with like recipes, um, stuff with kinetic stuff. Uh, you can also change the range of, a, um, where is it? There's the range of belts in here somewhere. Uh, yeah, again, if you're just a normal player, you will not have to mess with these, but it might be interesting to go through and look at them just to see what kind of stuff you can change. So yeah. 
And with that, I believe I'm going to end this video off. So if you liked the video, like the video and subscribe if you want. Thank you for watching.